Welcome to our new challenge, which is creating the connecting plate. And as a personal preference, let's head to grid and snaps. And I want you to untick snap to grid and incremental move. Let me grab our 2D drawing. As a quick tip, notice that our drawing is symmetrical, meaning this left items here are same at the right. Make it the habit to always place the x, y, z coordinates at zero, meaning placing the coordinates here, which is the center of our sketch. Adding back to Fusion 360, the x, y, z coordinates at zero is this item here. Now, if we turn on our origin and expand the folder, notice as I hover over our zero, it highlights as well. Let's turn off the visibility of our origin point, origin axis, and planes. Let's now enter sketch mode. Let's head up to sketch and select create sketch. Here, we are prompted to select a plane or planar face. In this instance, think of it that we are given three papers. And those three papers to sketch on are named as XY, XZ, and YZ. For this lesson, let's sketch on our XY plane. Now, if I hover over this plane, I know this is XY because as I hover here, the XY plane on our origin folder highlights in blue. Another visual indication is as we head to our view cube, we can see that axis Z is pointing up, meaning we are at X and at the back is Y. Let's head back to our XY plane and left click. Another quick tip, you know that you are in the sketch mode whenever you see stop sketch. That's another visual cue. Clearly stated on our drawing, we have two circles with a distance of 100 based on their center points. Let's now head up to sketch and grab our center diameter circle. Let's create our first diameter here at the right of our origin. Notice as I hover my cursor over our origin and move slowly to the right, we are given a blue dashed line. And in AutoCAD, this is called snap tracking. Let's place our center point here, left click. Notice the value in our dimension field moves up as my circle gets bigger and whenever the values are highlighted in blue that is an indication that we can key in values so let's key in 20 hitting enter and enter once more let's reposition our circular dimension hovering over the dimension left click and hold and release let's grab our circle tool once more heading up to sketch going to circle take note the keyboard shortcut for center diameter circle is C create another circle without snap tracking in mind left click here for now I will not input any value and instead left click to create the circle hitting escape Instead of grabbing our dimension and creating another dimension for this circle, let's add intelligence to this entity by adding a sketch constraint. So let's head to our sketch palette, scroll down, and grab our equal constraint. Notice the equal symbol on the lower right of our cursor. Let's select our parent entity. In addition, whenever an entity highlights, so notice as I hover over our circle, it highlights. That is the moment we can perform a left click. Left clicking now, 
parent entity selected and the child to be this circle left click notice the equal constraint symbol added to our two circles hitting escape to disable equal to demonstrate the effect of the equal constraint let's head to our 20 dimension double left click to edit its value let's key in 40 so notice both of the circles updated to 40 millimeter diameter hitting control Z to undo next let's define the distance between the two center points of the circles heading up to sketch moving down and selecting sketch dimension let's select the center point of the circle and the center point of the circle moving up place our dimension here left click key in 100 hitting enter and hitting escape I want the distance between our two circles equal to our origin and both of the center point of these two circles aligned horizontally to do that, let's grab our line tool. So heading up to sketch, selecting line, which has a shortcut of L. Drop our first point at the center point of our circle, moving to the other circle, left click, hit escape. Now this line serves as a helper. So let's make this as a construction entity, selecting this line. Head up to our sketch palette and select construction. Hitting escape. Let's make sure this line is horizontal. So let's head to our sketch palette once more under constraints. Selecting horizontal constraint. Selecting our construction line. Constraint in place. Hitting escape. And finally, to place our circles in between our origin let's head back to constraints selecting midpoint selecting our horizontal line and our origin left click hitting escape notice our construction entities turned into black meaning they are fully constrained from here I cannot move the sketch entities no longer to show you the difference, I'm going to hit Control Z to undo. So it's now in color blue. Notice as I left click and hold our center point, I can move our sketch entities. Now moving entities is a great way of determining the constraints or dimensions that are missing from our sketch. Reverting back. And reapplying our midpoint constraint, so heading back to our sketch palette, selecting midpoint, select our horizontal line and our origin. Hitting escape. 